Maker, this is Claire from Eclair Makery and today I am going to be teaching you how to do the waistcoat stitch. This stitch is one of my favorite um, crochet stitches to do because it just adapts the single crochet stitch and gives you this beautiful looking knit stitch. Um, the waistcoat stitch is also known as the knit stitch because it creates a stitch definition that looks like the stockinette stitch that you get when you knit. This is my go-to stitch when I am doing color work garments because it creates stitches that stack so nicely on top of each other, which comes in handy so much for color work. But I won't be going into details with that today, I will just be teaching you the basics of how to do this stitch. Before we get started on this tutorial, if you would like to keep up with all of my upcoming tutorials and pattern releases, be sure to click that subscribe button below and like this video so that I know you enjoyed this. And let's go ahead and jump right in. To demonstrate this crochet stitch, I am going to be using a couple different things. I am using Brava Bulky Weight by Wee Crochet and a size L 7mm crochet hook. You can of course do this stitch with any weight of yarn and any size crochet hook, but I'm using these two today so that you can really see the stitches and get that good um, up close shot at how to do this crochet stitch. The main skill that you will need to know in order to do the waistcoat stitch is how to do a single crochet. All waistcoat stitches are made from single crochet stitches and when you're going to begin your waistcoat stitch, no matter if you're working in the round or if you are working flat like I'm doing right here, you will begin with a foundational row of single crochets. Now you could do a foundation single crochet but I highly recommend doing a series of chain stitches and then single crocheting just because it's a little bit easier to tell where the posts of each stitch is, which is what we will be doing our waistcoat stitch in. So once you're ready to begin your first row of waistcoat stitch, you're going to start by chaining one, then we're going to turn, and I highly recommend if you're working flat um, to start every row with just one normal single crochet. This kind of helps provide like a foundation um, that you can work the other stitches off of, and I just I feel like it works a lot better, <laughs> um, but it's totally up to you if you want to just start in the chain stitch right here or in this post to do a waistcoat stitch, but I just really like um, doing one single crochet to start. Once you have that done right here on this stitch, then we are going to begin our waistcoat stitches. So what we're going to do with doing the waistcoat stitch is we're going to be doing a single crochet, but instead of doing it in the normal top two loops like we do up here, we are going to do it in the V of the stitch right here in the post. So I recommend if you are having a hard time spotting the V's of your stitches in the post of it, that you use a bigger hook because that way it's uh, you'll work a little bit looser and you'll be able to tell where they are a lot easier. Like the gauge for this bulky yarn is using a 6.5 millimeter hook, but because I tend to have tighter stitches, I went ahead and I upgraded to a 7 millimeter hook. So once you've got your hook and everything ready to go, we're going to start doing this first waistcoat stitch. So we're going to take our hook, and you're going to find this V right here, and then we're going to insert our hook through that V, so it's going to go through the middle of that post, and then we are going to do a normal single crochet. And you'll see here, what it did for this stitch is it created a stitch that looks like a V. Now this is just a normal single crochet, but because we worked it in that V, in that post of the stitch, it created the stitch to look a lot different. So then we'll move to the next post, do the same thing. Insert your hook through that, pull it up and finish your single crochet. And then you repeat that in each one of these little posts all the way across this row. So you'll see we've got three of these right here. They all look nice. And we've got three waistcoat stitches there. Now when you're doing the waistcoat stitch worked flat like this, it's going to turn out a little bit different than when we do it in the round, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, that's because it 
the stitches um, stack the best when they're done in the round, which is why you'll see most patterns done with the waistcoat stitch will be hats or sweaters. Um, most of my patterns with the waistcoat stitch are sweaters just because with color work it stacks so nicely. Um, but you can also use it when you work flat. You'll just have to have a couple more tricks that I will show you. So we've got this last waistcoat stitch that we'll do before we do our single crochet to end that row. After we have this first row of waistcoat stitches, now we are going to work on the second row. Now when you do the waistcoat stitch worked flat, the V's appear a little bit differently um, on each row. If you're doing it in the round, they appear the same the entire time you're working it, but they appear a little bit differently on the back side here. So you'll see on this side, the V's appear where they are facing upward like they are a normal V shape. On the back, you'll see that the V's appear upside down. So when you are working one of these stitches on the back, you are gonna go through the upside down V. This way, you can make sure that your stitches line up a little bit better. So what I like to do when I'm doing this on the wrong side, so this will be the wrong side of the work, you're gonna insert your hook through that upside down V right here and then I like to flip it over and just double check. Did I go through the middle of that V on the other side? This way, I can ensure that my Vs are always stacking on my piece that's worked flat. So we'll do that again, all the way across, where you go through the upside down V of the stitch. So you'll have this post right here, but it has the V upside down, so you're just gonna make sure that you go through the V on both sides so that you can get that same look all the way across. Now you'll notice on here that it kind of looks like a little X here, and that's because of the V's stacking differently. So the stitches are going to have more of an X shape versus V shape um, when you look at the stitches overall. So it looks kind of a little bit more like a diamond versus um, kind of that more knit stockinette stitch look that you might be used to a seam with waistcoat stitch. But you'll still get the same effect overall. And that's just how you do that. And then you'll do it on the, on the other side. You'll do it like normal where you'll work through those other Vs. And you'll see here again, because we're on a new row, the V's are a little bit different. So we're gonna always just wanna make sure that we go through the V of the stitch, that way that our stitches will line up more. And they'll be a little bit more slanted when they're worked flat, um, which is why I recommend um, doing the stitch worked in the round, which I am just about to show you how you will do that. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the waistcoat stitch in the round. I've gone ahead and I have done a, um, little sample here of just doing 20 single crochets, so doing 20 chains, then joining them together with a slip stitch, and then doing a foundational row of single crochet off of those chains. So just like we did before, um, this is going to, the waistcoat stitch is going to be done the same way, except when I work in the round with the waistcoat stitch, usually I don't do that foundational single crochet, especially if you're going to be joining rounds. Um, what will happen is that it will start to look um, like there's, you can really, really see the join on your pieces if you are doing single crochet to start and end your round. So you don't necessarily have to do that because you have this chain stitch to kind of mark where you were gonna start each round um, and then you can, you know, right away where your first stitch is on here. So we are going to do the same thing like we did before where we look for this um, post stitch right here, the V of the stitch, so not these two loops right here on the V. Insert your hook through that Make sure you go through that post, through the middle of the post, and then you've got your first waistcoat stitch formed. So I'll show you that again on this next one. Go through that post right there. And just keep going. And it will be the same waistcoat stitch like I showed you worked flat. We're just working in the round. So um, when you work the waistcoat stitch in the round, you are always going 
um, to be working it on the right side. I never work on the wrong side when I use the weight coat stitch in the round. Oh, gotta take that one out. Um, I just find that because of the way the stitches are, because of the way um, when I do color work with it, the way that the color work usually turns out, I don't need to do it in um, right and wrong sides. So that's one reason why I love this stitch, because I don't like working on right and wrong sides in the round. I just like having it nice and easy where it's all on the right side. So go ahead and just finish this first round here. I'll go ahead and finish this up and then show you how the second rounds and the rest of the rounds are done with the waistcoat stitch. So I've got that first round of waistcoat stitch done and you can already tell that these V's are stacked so nicely on top of each other. Doesn't that look just so good? I love when waistcoat stitch stacks so nicely. And so when you begin your next round, you'll start it with whatever chain stitch amount you need. And then we just get to work right in these V's and move right along it's so nice and easy once you get this first row of waistcoat stitch done when you are working in the round because look they just stack nicely every single round that you do it's amazing and then if you ever need to do an increase on your waistcoat stitch guess what it's done exactly the same as a single crochet increase so instead of doing your normal single crochet increase we're going to just do our single crochet increase by doing two waistcoat stitches single crochets <laughs> in the same stitch and the same goes for when you have to do a decrease with a waistcoat stitch when you do that all you have to do is you just insert your hook through one of the waistcoat stitches and then insert it through the next one, yarn over, pull through all three of those loops, and look, you got your waistcoat stitch decrease. And what I always do is then I will, um, if I'm doing a stitch through that decrease on the next round, I just go through this main V of the stitch and you can continue the look of the waistcoat stitch all the way through. So I just love how this stitch is works so nicely. Um, when you have to do color work, um, or if you just want to get that knit look of a sweater without needing to do, um, without having to worry about learning how to knit. And this is basically just how you do the waistcoat stitch. It's just a modified single crochet so that you can create this beautiful knit look stitch with just your crochet hook and your favorite yarn. Before we go, I want to share a couple quick tips about how gauge works with the waistcoat stitch. So when it comes to gauge with the waistcoat stitch, it's going to be done a little bit differently depending on what type of project you're doing. If you are doing a project worked flat, you are going to do a gauge swatch that is worked flat, um, and you'll see that the stitches are a little bit differently. They're more of the X's versus the lovely little V's that we have stacked on top of each other when it's worked here in the round. Um, so this was my four inch by four inch square for a DK weight yarn done worked flat, and then this is the bulky weight yarn I've been using for this tutorial um, done in the round. So when you're doing the in the round gauge swatch, and you can take your gauge swatch ruler or a normal uh, measuring tape and then you'll place it on your swatch. I recommend when you are making your swatch that you take the gauge amount that your project says, double that, and then do it in the round. That way you get an accurate um, picture and it basically is like a little cup cozy or mug cozy for your um, swatch. That will show you how your stitches are going to behave and work in the round. So then you'll take your ruler, line it up, and then um, if it's a little bit tilted with your stitches, you can kind of tilt it. Then you count how many stitches across it is for four inches and then how many rows down to four inches that it is as well. Then once you get that accurate view of what your project, your gauge project um, amount is going to be, then you can go ahead and start. So I highly recommend doing, if you're doing a project in the round, doing the gauge swatch that has worked in the round um, with the waistcoat stitch just because it um, has the stitches stacked more on top of each other um, instead of doing the shortcut, which is what I tend to do a lot. I admit, even as a designer, I tend to take the shortcuts. <laughs> um, and if you are doing a project in the round, it won't depict the same 
stitches and the same amount of stitches that you'll have if you do a worked flat one. And basically it's just done the same way normal gauge is, just with those couple little tips so that you can get a um, better fitting garment, a more accurate sized project, and just have a better experience with the waistcoat stitch in general. Well, I hope that you loved um, learning how to crochet the waistcoat stitch and that you're super excited to start creating knit looking crochet projects. If you want to check out some of my patterns that use the waistcoat stitch, be sure to look in the description box below and check out the blog post for this tutorial that has some more tips and tricks in there that I use when I am using this stitch. I can't wait to show you some of the more upcoming tutorials that I have for you for how to do crochet projects and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank Bye. you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like it below if you enjoyed watching it and hit the subscribe button if you never want to miss out a video from me and also check out my other videos and tutorials on my channel. See you next time.